I hope now you can see this. Can you hear me? Is it visible to all of you? I'm sorry. Is it muted? Yes, I was. If it is US, US it should be giving something else. Uh, yes, it's I was speaking to Manohar. Yeah, this is Manohar actually. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm in a room you. <coughs> Hi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, it's night, uh, night here, not the evening. <laughs> yeah, 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 true, true, true. Sorry. Yes, yes. Muted. So, from which place are you in India? Hello? Hello? From Hyderabad, actually. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Continue. Can you hear me? I'm from Hyderabad, and uh, uh, I'm a real-time expert and a research analyst. So I am into more into uh, Java as well as big data, as well as Python, uh, all the different uh, kind of uh, technologies. Okay. So I mean, uh, uh, my. No hurry, if you don't mind. Uh, like yeah. uh, Java in the sense, you you, uh, you are in the uh, involved in the uh, Spring Boot uh, also, right? It's a, yeah. So it, yes, yes, sir. Okay, like I mean, uh, it's a basic like like uh, Java Spring Boot and containers and JS. So, so why during the development you are allowed to deal all, with all these technologies? Am I correct? Yeah, full stack, almost full stack development, but uh, I didn't work too much into Angular JS. Uh, may I know your good name, please? Yeah, Pratap. Pratap? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, Pratap. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, we ha I had worked with uh, Spring Hibernate, uh, uh, these web services, uh, as well as this uh, Core Java is, uh, as usual, you know very well. Yeah. Without Core Java, you know, there is nothing like developing any project. That's the point here. I mean, when you talk about Java related uh, uh, projects, what I am talking here. Okay. But but anyhow, nothing to worry. Uh, definitely we'll have a good time here uh, uh, learning this Java and you have very good experience with this uh, Java thing. Uh, may I quickly know, like, you know, uh, uh, just uh, have I. Will you introduce yourself once then so that I can start taking this session? I see. So, yeah, yeah Manohar. Uh, if you don't mind, I can start from, from yeah. with me. Like. Yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah. So, myself, Pratap, uh, I'm in uh, Texas. Yes. So, yeah, I worked for almost two years in the industry. So, now, I mean, I was. Uh, uh, like you know yes like 
Yes, I have one year, of, one year of experience, but I'm not full into Java development yet. But uh, I worked on Talon, mm -hmm. uh, which is a uh, Java ideal tool. Mostly, I have done my uh, work and most of the projects in uh, Talon itself. So I don't have uh, much exposure to the Java, but uh, I have a little bit of understanding. I mean, we could have exposure to that. Yes, yes. Uh... So, so apart from uh, from the database side, uh, I have a little bit. Um, no exposure to the Oracle and NetAja. Yes. And for the development, uh, I did most of the development in ETL. Yeah. And I work a little bit on API. So that's all from my side. Yeah. And I see Babu here and uh, 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 and then Gopi. And Sai. Yeah. Can you hear me, Babu? Gopi? Yes, sir, I can hear you. So. Yeah, myself, my name is Gopi, and I'm pursuing a master's in. Arkansas University. Okay. I don't have any experience. Yeah, that's. I just come to I just come to Mandragat and I came to do my masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Babu, Babu is. Yeah, hi, Babu. I am from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I just completed my masters. I'm um, in OPT. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any idea in the Java developer, so I just want to know about it. Yeah, that's fine. We are going to start with that uh, today. So and welcome to R and D Deity School and. Uh, uh, let's start introduction towards Java. Let's see what this Java is. Uh, I think I'm starting this session. Is it fine for all of us, right? Yes, sir. No problem. Uh, may I have a question? Uh, the thing is that can I record this video for now? Yeah, this video is uh, uh, recording by R and D I T School itself, and we share oh, okay, okay, recording that. also. There's mm -hmm. nothing to worry. All right, that's fine. So okay. We'll have recording of every session. Uh, I don't know who's that, Bob. Huh? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sai, okay. There is a recording, and you, every recording will be shared to you. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Sai, I just want to know if I miss anyone uh, so that. No, I skip you don't have any time. problem. You have complete support from R and D I T School. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. So, shall we start uh, then now uh, our uh, introduction to Java here, right? So, let's see this. What is this Java? And uh, let's start with this. When you talk about Java. You know, generally people call with uh, different names. You say that uh, Java is a programming language or you say Java is a platform. So we should talk about these two first. So when you talk about this, Java is a programming language. Or you can say Java is a platform. Otherwise, there is one more thing. So let us understand all this one by one slowly. There is nothing to <coughs> excuse me. Uh, uh, nothing difficult here because what I observe is Java is very simple programming language. So programming language means what is this? Why do we need this? That is the question. Generally, you know, when you talk about any programming language, it is used to develop a software. You just look into different languages starting from C or C++ or even uh, some other programming languages, not just Java. Why do we need any language is simple. Languages helps us to develop a software. That's why we were called when you learn Java. We, we are called people call us software engineers. So what, what do we do after learning languages means generally we, we go and develop some softwares here. So that is one thing uh, why we need a language here. So that is fine. Then generally, you know, uh, what kind of programming language is Java? That is the next question. Java is nothing but we call it as object oriented. So we call it as a object oriented. What do you mean by object oriented? That is another question here. See, this is a long process. When you talk about object oriented, we have to talk about uh, multiple things here. Like, you know, we, we should know about object, we should know about class, abstraction, encapsulation, uh, inheritance, polymorphism, message passing, dynamic binding. There are so many things we need to discuss. But what I suggest at this beginning stage is, uh, as we are in the first session, just remember Java is an object-oriented programming language. Later on, definitely we are going to discuss about each and every feature of that uh, OOP, like what I had just discussed. When you say something is OOP, it should have these features. Let me quickly explain to all of you something like, you know, we should have uh, these features must be there for any object oriented programming something like object something like class something like abstraction something like uh, encapsulation uh, uh, then uh, uh, inheritance uh, and then 
polymorphism and then uh, message passing and then uh, dynamic binding these are general features of op so that is a uh, dynamic binding uh, could, uh, dear friends could you please mute your uh, uh, machine because I, I see some sounds coming so if you if you okay, I'll mute it. I'll mute it. that's fine yeah, yeah yeah so if you have any questions please ping me or uh, you can unmute and ask your question anytime you have complete support here uh, there is nothing nothing to you don't need to hesitate to ask your questions also so coming back to the point here uh, this is about just see I, I just listed out the features uh, that's all but the point is we should understand each and everything here that is very important uh, when you start learning java but this is very ba basic session the ba very beginning session now i am not going to talk about these features I'm going to explain about uh, the environment of Java and the very basics of Java. That is what we are going to discuss. I hope this is clear to all of you, right? So just type S if you are okay with the, uh, everything, okay? Just uh, in the chat box, when I ask you a question, please type S there, okay? So coming back to this now, this is, this is a simple idea. Just I'm giving you a simple idea about what is uh, object-oriented programming. What is Java? It's a simple programming language and uh, object oriented and it has all these features might be you ask me again a question uh, what is what is the object what is class all this could you explain us see definitely we are going to discuss about all this nothing to worry about that okay so but just as of now remember later on uh, once we are done with this uh, basics of java we have to talk exclusively about object oriented programming features that is what is very important here so now uh, I'll sh shift my discussion to something called what is a platform. So generally, you know, when you talk about platform, it can be something like a, a hardware or a software. Platform is something like a hardware or software where we can run your uh, programs. That is what we call platform. So what is that? Uh, something like hardware or software where we can run programs. Uh, so generally, you know, when I talk about Java, uh, people keep asking questions. Uh, on which platform you are working? Then we say this, we, I am working on Java, I am working on .NET, I am working on some data warehousing, something like that. Even our cousins or friends will be uh, telling all this. So that's what a platform is. The meaning of platform is uh, it is something uh, it can be hardware or it can be software where we can execute programs in that platform. Now, might be asked me, you told Java is a language. How come this is a software? You know, obviously Java is a language, no doubt about that programming language, object oriented. But when it comes to this platform, even in Java, if you want to run Java programs, we need to install JRE. And uh, this JRE helps you to run different uh, programs of Java. So means this helps you, this acts as a, a platform for, for Java developers. So that's why we call this as platform. And generally, you know, even your operating system also can be called as a platform. So you can call OS also as a platform. Even in operating system, we run programs, you know, very well. Once you start your machine, uh, you keep uh, executing different programs uh, starting from the OS itself, you know, uh, starting from clicking on some icons to what is that uh, running so many things, you know, even now I am running uh, different programs right now, notepad at the same time, go to meeting uh, and add, uh, th these are different programs. So that is simple idea about uh, what is platform here and that is fine to all of you, right? So that's the basic idea. So when somebody asks you what is Java? Java is both here, friends, okay? Say programming language, probably object-oriented. We'll talk about all this. I think to worry like, you know, what, what is this features here? And then it's a platform, and I had just discussed in detail. Uh, it is something, something a hardware or a software where we can run programs. So here, JRE and, uh, is the best example for uh, Java, and OS, generally OS is even called as a platform. Now I'm going, I'm going to discuss about the next thing. I'm, I'm moving to the next part here when you talk about uh, Java. Now I'm just quickly explaining languages. So just to get some quick idea. So generally we, when you talk about language, 
just now I had discussed. So what is the language? I am starting from very scratch. I know some of you might be having uh, some idea about this, all these basics. Uh, but still, if uh, I, I want you, to, everyone, to be very clear with uh, the starting point of uh, this thing, programming, very fundamentals of languages, everything. So when you talk about language, I had just discussed. Why do you need language? Language is used to develop software. Why do you need language? It is used to develop software. Second thing, generally, you know, we can categorize language into two types. Depends on our usage. Generally, in uh, semester, we call it as uh, what is that? Uh, uh, something like uh, uh, three types generally. But here I am just uh, talking about two languages. The first one is high level and the second one is low level. So now the question is what is high level and what is a uh, low level? High level is something uh, user defined. So English like otherwise, uh, or we can say it is something like uh, uh, English like that's high level. I hope this is clear for all of you. So something like, you know, when you talk about high level languages, uh, we can take examples like C, CPP, Java, so many languages. There are hundreds of languages here. Anything is something in any, any language, something like English, we call it as high level friends. I hope this is clear for all of you, right? So that is the point here. So we can categorize languages into two types. One is high level, the other one is a low level. And this is user defined. And you have idea about this, I hope. Next, low level means something like a binary language or machine language. So we call it as machine or a system understandable language. I hope this is clear for all of you. So you know, right? Your ca computer can understand only binary language. That is uh, uh, something like zeros and ones. I hope this is clear for all of you, right? Now this is fine here. We don't have any issue with this. This is simple idea about different types of languages: high level and uh, low level. Generally, we write high level language programs. Might be you write Java or C or C plus plus or any programming uh, any language you use these are high level here so that's fine now the question is i'll quickly go through the discussion i hope this is clear for all of you right is there any difficulty in this might be you will be knowing this otherwise if i am not wrong so so now uh, let's get into the uh, further discussion uh, translators i don't uh, discuss uh, much of all this because it might be what I know is uh, you will be having idea about this. So generally, I'm just quickly uh, revising all this so that uh, if uh, if anybody has any gap with this, so that uh, it will be easy for you to just to quickly uh, understand. So what is a translator here? It's simple. It is used to convert this high-level language program to low-level or uh, machine language. That is a translator. So what translator does here, friends? It converts a high level language to low level. That is a machine language. Language to low level or you can call it as a, what is that friends? A machine language otherwise and vice versa. Vice versa means what do you mean by vice versa? Again, this low level is converted back to uh, high level form like user understandable form so that is the point here and then here you know when you talk about this dear friends sir we have three types of translators the first one is a compiler the second one is a interpreter of course interpreter the third one is a assembler there is nothing much to discuss about assembler here. Generally, we use uh, in our high level programs uh, either compiler or interpreter. Assembler is exclusively used for uh, executing assembly language programs. Now, the question is uh, what is a compiler? Let's talk about that. It is a translator, as name says. See, any of these are doing a similar kind of job here. You talk about compiler, you talk about interpreter, you talk about assembler. They are used to convert one language to another language. 
compiler will convert the whole language when you talk about this uh, it, it converts the whole language from high level to machine and vice versa the whole program otherwise like uh, let me call simplify this it will convert the whole program from high level to machine and machine to high level that's all about uh, compiler so that is one thing so when you talk about interpreter so what is interpreter doing here it will execute line by line of code that is a uh, interpreted so here it executes line by line of code so that is interpreter so and the last one assembler generally you know this is used to execute exclusively assembly language programs there is something called uh, uh, something a low level language uh, which is more useful for uh, uh, this kind of you know right uh, hacking or something like that and the instructions are very low level <coughs> excuse me uh, such type of uh, language if you want to execute then definitely we need assembler generally we don't use assemblers at uh, our language thing okay we use compiler as well as interpreter but this is just an idea so why do you need this it executes uh, assembly language programs uh, and it has even assembler works similar to compiler and interpreter so it executes assembly language programs and this is simple idea friends uh, this is about uh, this uh, uh, translators uh, might be compiler might be interpreter uh, might be assembler so that's the point here so only thing is you should understand better about compiler and interpreter here generally when you use compiler it converts the whole program from high level to machine and vice versa and interpreter executes line by line of code i hope this is clear to all of you right after that now i am going to just quickly jump to the discussion of a, a quick history of java first so then after that we'll discuss about few important things what is why uh, what are the important features of java and uh, the execution process of a java program all that we are going to discuss here but uh, so far i think you are good right are you good so i hope you are following me so just please type yes ma'am yeah. yeah yeah so now next one this is actually most of the things so most of the stuff with which i am trying to discuss here uh, it is uh, it is a simple very simple and basic stuff okay now after this uh, what i am going to discuss here is a uh, let us talk about simple history of java i think uh, see generally you know it is very simple to talk about history but it, this is not so much important even might be ask me if it is not important then why are you talking here uh, just to get some basic understanding that's all just to see who is the who developed java and uh, when it was developed just some basic idea that's all so when you talk about history of java so you know this uh, actually this java was developed uh, to support uh, to develop software for electronic devices even uh, the people who developed java they don't know that that this will be so popular like uh, how it is happening now uh, when you talk about this uh, history of java java is developed to support or to develop it is uh, developed to support electronic devices so that is actual purpose of developing java so generally you know uh, in the early 1990s might be some of you uh, i think uh, were just born or uh, uh, might be you you might, i don't know your ages but still when you talk about early 1990s it goes uh, long back i think uh, almost 27 years back uh, uh, at that time you know c and c++ uh, are the uh, most powerful languages but the problem with them is uh, uh, when you talk about c and c++ both are platform dependent so in 1990s c c p p are the most powerful languages and the point here is a uh, both are the most powerful languages 
but the problem with them is uh, they are platform independent sorry platform dependent i'm sorry they are platform dependent that's fine now the question is uh, uh, might be ask me a question mr manohar what is this platform i think i just had explained what is platform it can be an operating system or it can be any technology so now the question is what is platform dependent let me quickly explain this before going to the further discussion about uh, the history so that you get some idea about uh, uh, why what is the exact reason for developing java so here platform dependent means it's a simple point suppose you have developed a software some software using c or c++ and you have developed the software on windows assume that uh, the software whatever i am just typing here it is developed in windows that name can be anything we don't need to care about that now i want to execute this on uh, uh, some linux operating system or i want to execute this on unix operating system so the question is is it possible so that is the question so when i talk about c and c++ can you execute uh, the software of windows on linux prints if it is developed in c and c++ no right it's not possible why because when something is platform dependent uh, the problem is a uh, software of one operating system cannot be executed on other operating system and that is what we call platform dependent is i hope this is clear for all of you so the problem with c and c++ is that that's why this java people what they have done is uh, they want to develop uh, something which is platform independent so and that's how the development of java started and it was developed by sun microsystems who developed java java was developed by sun microsystems under the guidance of james gosling and you know the initial name of java was oak and in 1995 actually this oak is renamed to java this is simple history uh, there is nothing much we need to talk about this but i hope you got the reason why people developed java here reason is very simple earlier c and c++ were there but the problem with them is uh, both are platform dependent and java people want something uh, an independent language platform independent language what do you mean by platform independent if software of one operating system if we can run them on platform uh, other operating system then it is platform independent what is uh, dependent if software of one operating system cannot be executed on other operating system then it is a uh, platform dependent these are the simple basic friends i hope this is clear for all of you right so now that's all we are done with the uh, what is that uh, introduction part of uh, java now what i am going to do here is uh, i am going to explain the execution process of a, a java program i hope you are ready for that friends i hope this this is a simple stuff just to get quick idea about uh, the fundamentals of java is it clear to all of you friends now let's talk about uh, execution process of a java program so that we understand few basics here i hope you are ready for that so or these things whatever i had discussed is it fine for you are you following guys are you with me yes yeah, ma'am yes ma'am yeah, ma yeah actually no, this is very beginning session so i'm just trying to just uh, wrap up all the basic things that's all uh, don't think uh, this will continue further okay so coming back to this <clears throat> execution process from here on what sir let's talk about uh, what is the execution process of a java program and here we understand uh, the basic part you know, what is byte code what is jvm we are going to understand uh, all this here okay so when you talk about execution process sir, so generally you know we write a java program and we call it as what is that uh, 
it is called source code friends what do you call source code this is a a dot a, a, you wrote a program in java generally java has an extension dot java and what do you call generally the program which you write might be in c or c plus plus or java or c sharp or any programming language you name it as source code now the question is uh, you know right not only in java anywhere when you write any program it has to undergo different uh, two phases you know what are those two phases the first phase is compilation the second phase is uh, execution might be most of you know this but anyhow let me give a detailing here so <clears throat> Now, when you write a, a program in Java, first thing here is a, we should compile this. Let's compile. When you compile, you get a code something called dot class, or you can call this dot class as byte code even. This is also called as a byte code. That is fine, friends. So that is one level. Now, generally you write a program in Java. The extension for that is dot java and uh, once you write program after that what you do sir you compile that when you compile a dot java program you get an intermediate code that is something called dot class or you can call it as byte code now the question is uh, can i directly execute this code that is the question you cannot execute byte code directly friends it's not possible might be you ask me a question why because byte code is intermediate code and your system cannot understand byte code it can understand only machine code that's all i hope this is clear to all of you so what should we do then you know friends we have to convert this again for one more time again we should convert byte code to machine code i hope this is clear for all of you so for that you know we have to go for one more conversion and uh, we need to use one more special program to convert byte code to machine code and that is called as a jvm so what jvm does what is the meaning of jvm most of you must be having an idea but still i'll write it java virtual machine i hope this is clear here so when you talk about this jvm what is this here what jvm is doing jvm is converting byte code to machine code so that is generally what jvm does what it will do it converts a byte code to machine code i am just erasing this just for some space here so it converts byte code to machine code and you know what is machine code very well this is binary code and jvm will execute this machine code finally gives us output and this is simple execution flow here of course we are not just done with this we need to talk few important things now again let me quickly come back and quickly revise this one more time so generally when you talk about the execution process in java you write a dot java program and then you compile this then you get a an intermediate code called as something like dot class or byte code and now we have to convert this again for one more time into machine code so what this machine code will do here what is this uh, how do you convert this byte code to machine code for that we use something a program called jvm so what jvm does a jvm converts byte code to machine code and execute this machine code finally provides the output i hope this is clear to all of you friends so that is fine now so now the question is uh, what is this uh, byte code here so and how, why java is platform independent because i i had just uh, used few words what is that uh, c and c++ are platform dependent java is platform independent we had just discussed that now the question is how come java is platform independent so and this is going now we are going to understand that here here when you talk about uh, this byte code now this is byte code suppose you are running this program on windows operating system just let us quickly just take assume that this is on windows now this is byte code is 
Windows bytecode. Now the question is, I want to run this on Linux. Is it possible? I want to run this on Unix. Is it possible? The answer for that is yes. So when you talk about uh, the bytecode of Java, we can run this bytecode of one operating system on any other operating system. Now I can run this on uh, what is that? Uh, Linux. So I'll just write here. I can run this on Unix. Also, Sun Solaris, Mac, you know, these are the most popular operating systems. Is it clear to all of you, right, friends? Got clarity here, right? It's dot, dot, dot. You can put some dot, dot, dot here, okay? So, and this is very clear here. You have a bytecode here, and this is of Windows. Now I can run this on Linux. I can run this on Unix and some other Mac, Sun Solaris, or whatever the binary is supported by the Java thing, okay? Now, the question is very simple. So what is this here? This is platform independent. Why? Because you are able to run the bytecode of Java, not only on uh, the parent operating system, but also on other operating systems. So that's why we call Java as platform independent. Java is platform independent because of bytecode actually. That is one thing. Now the question is, uh, uh, sir, you told that this is a uh, Windows bytecode and you had explained that we need JVM to convert uh, bytecode to machine code. The question is, uh, is this JVM platform dependent or independent? Now we came to a conclusion. Bytecode is platform independent, no doubt about that. But what about JVM? Is JVM independent or dependent? The answer for that is very simple. JVM is platform dependent. Why? Because every operating system should have its own JVM. Linux should have its own JVM. Unix should have its own JVM. And uh, Sun Solaris or Mac should have their own JVMs. JVM is a uh, platform dependent. Every operating system should have its own JVM. But which is independent? Bytecode. Of course, anywhere JVM is doing the same job. It converts bytecode to machine code and execute that machine code and provides the output. So this is a simple idea about execution flow. Of course, there is a small thing I would like to add to this execution flow. Initially, it was JVM which is converting bytecode to machine code but you know friends but uh, from 1.2 version onwards the sun people you know i just told you who developed java java was developed by sun microsystems under the guidance of james gosling and these guys the sun people you know they had introduced a, a supporting program for jvm and you call it as a jit compiler you know why jit compiler again to increase the performance of a JVM, they had included JIT with JVM so that you know JIT and JVM will together will convert bytecode to machine code. This is one more important point. So this is another addition to JVM by Sun Microsystems. Is this clear to all of you, right? So this is about what is that? The execution architecture, simple execution architecture. So, any questions here so far to anyone, friends? Yeah, my uh, name uh, Yeah, yeah, please. So, so is that is this JIT also uh, platform dependent, right? You mean JIT? Yeah, JIT is also platform dependent. True. Okay. Because, uh, you know, that is also part of JVM, treated as a part of a JVM. It's a background for JVM, actually. So here JIT and JVM will together will execute this bytecode to machine code. Is this question answer clear to you, right? So yeah, yeah, I think that, yeah. So clear, right? Are, are you with me, guys? So 
just you, you can type s there okay and i hope you are following right yes okay, fine so this is simple analysis now i have quick questions to all of you because uh, this is where uh, the basic fundamentals of java starts sir so here we had just discussed a couple of important things here what is bytecode and then what is a uh, jvm okay and then uh, what is jit compiler so these were the different things what we had discussed in the past uh, 20 minutes uh, what is jit compiler and then also we had discussed about uh, differences between platform you know right platform means you are clear right platform means something uh, operating system uh, or technology and what is platform dependent and what is platform independent okay all this friends are you clear guys I, I i think you can quickly answer i'll just keep asking questions too just for betterment of learning because uh, one-way traffic uh, is not uh, is very dangerous friends sir. so sometimes what is that is you should be interactive so quickly answer what is byte code you have a uh, chat there uh, otherwise uh, you can uh, answer me also that's not a problem so byte code generally you know right uh, it is a platform independent code we can run this on any operating system what is jvm jvm converts byte code to machine code what is jit compiler jit is included with jvm to enhance the performance of jvm what is platform dependent see it's very simple if we we cannot execute a program of one operating system on another operating system such programs we call dependent platform dependent programs and the language used to develop such programs we call it as platform dependent language and similarly same thing is applicable for platform independent what is this if we can execute program of one operating system <coughs> excuse me on another operating system then it is a platform independent program language used to develop such programs we call it as platform independent language i hope you are clear with all these simple basics right are you following guys is is my voice audible, audible clear everything is fine to all of you right so now coming back to the this is about what is that execution flow and here we have understood couple of important things because when you talk about java what maybe if I, if I ask you a question quick question why java is so popular in the market then people tell that one point here java is platform independent so that is the point uh, people always answer you and that's why java is popular of course you know why java is so powerful now is because one the powerful feature of java is uh, it is platform independent that's why it is very popular in the market and that is fine also it is object oriented so the first one is pi the second one is op right these are two reasons uh, why java is having so much popularity so this is simple about uh, basic things about the execution process of java program uh, up till now do you have any questions please if anybody want to ask me any questions or shall i continue friends just type s or no there so that uh, yeah i can continue thank you so much now actually you know friends i don't know uh, how good you are with programming but what i see is many people uh, uh, what is that is uh, will be a bit confused when it comes to programming because programming is not difficult it's because uh, our friends or our teachers will confuse us that is the problem they say that java is very difficult you should not learn that otherwise while you, you are in college somehow they confuse us that but the point which i would like to tell to all of you is uh, java, any programming language it's very interesting and very easy to learn provided you should understand the basics of programming i hope you are clear with this ladies and gentlemen so here the point is uh, now we are going to talk about language fundamentals what is that friends sir 
language fundamentals are you clear with this guys maybe you ask me a question why manohar why language fundamentals because this is where the journey of programming starts when you talk about java java is also a programming language so obviously we should know about language fundamentals but trust me if you are really good at these language fundamentals i can tell you you are almost good at c language c++ c sharp and many other languages so might be you ask me a question what language you are going to discuss mr manohar what language fundamentals see friends uh, anyone if if you want a fresher or experienced because i do train for the most experienced also i do train for the most freshers also we should know about all this variables keywords and then what is that friends sir constants and then data types and then operators actually from here onwards uh, i think uh, our actual journey of programming is going to start so far whatever i had discussed except the execution process of java program all the others are the just basic things are fundamentals of uh, programming or computer science i hope this is clear now so the question is uh, <coughs> friends sir uh, if you want to develop any program first you should master these five language fundamentals and you know if you want to be a good programmer just try to understand this properly nothing to do just you keep listening i'll making i'll be making you to work okay and uh, we'll be doing a great job here so that's it friends sir so now let's start with the variables sir so today we'll discuss about variables sir, and get some idea about variables and uh, we'll see the pros and cons we'll have question and answers sir. okay now let us talk about this variables so what is a variable so when you talk about variable i'll just ask you quick questions okay i take something a equal to 10 and something like uh, b equal to 20 okay all this this is fine friends a plus b all this friends now friends my question is to you it's very simple i just took two variables a equal to 10 b equal to 20 the question is when i say a plus b of course i want you to answer this please type in the type box what is the answer here a plus b 30 isn't it so when you say a plus b the answer for that is 30 so how can we answer this as 30 because in place of a you have substituted 10 in place of b you have substituted 20 so now the point is uh, how do i know that i should substitute 10 here and 20 here it's a simple thing i had named this 10 as a isn't it i had named this 20 as b are you following guys now the point is uh, when uh, the name of 10 is a and the name of 20 is b and this is what variable is what this is doing here it is identifying this value variable identifies a value friends i hope you are following this so what is a variable here a variable is an identifier which identifies a value so here uh, it's something like name to a value suppose a is a name to 10 b is name to 20 friends so that is a simple point let me quickly type this what is that uh, variable is a name given to a value so name given to a value of course you may ask me a question the question is very simple friends what is that sir uh, can we change the values of variables does the value changes yes the value of a variable can change friends so it is a name given to a value and the second thing is uh, its value can also change whose value changes so that is one important point friends after this then the next one a here is uh, when you talk about anything in programming everything has a syntax and you should follow the syntax friends that is very important even variable has a syntax 
So you know, right? When you talk about a variable, we should follow the syntax for variables. But before that, I think this is clear to all of you. Variable is a name given to a value and also that value can change. So that is important point. But how do you declare variables in programming? See, it, it might be C, it might be C++ or it might be Java. Anyway, they follow the same syntaxes. And one more important point. This is very important. I, I think I should have discussed that in the here, the basic thing. You know, when you talk about Java, Java is not something new for us. It is developed from both C and C++. So when you talk about Java, Java is developed from C and C++. So here Java follows the syntaxes. Probably most of the syntaxes in Java are from either C or from C++. Generally, syntaxes will be coming from C and concepts like OOP concepts. Generally, they are similar to C++ and Java is developed something from C and C++. So why I told this point is uh, generally Java also uses syntaxes similar to C programming. Might be you tell me. <coughs> I don't know. See, do I have any problem to learn Java? You don't need to have any experience in programming. Maybe you are just a layman in programming. Still, we can do that. Just uh, this is actually I am discussing the basics which were there even C and C++. So the syntax now the talk. Let's talk about the syntax of variable. It is something like data type space variable name followed by semicolon. That is the syntax. So what is syntax of variable data type space variable name semicolon. I hope this is clear for all of you friends. For example, something like, you know, int x and here int is a data type and x is a variable name. Now our discussion is about the right side part, this one, not about this data type because we know in the list which we had just discussed, data type is the fourth concept in the list. And we are going to discuss about that. There is nothing to worry about this. It's, yeah, that's fine now. The question is, uh, what is syntax? That's all. Just to memorize. There is no shortcut to uh, memory to remember syntaxes. You should memorize it. That's all. Data type space variable name semicolon. This is to declare one variable. Suppose you ask me a question, sir. I want to declare multiple variables. What should I do? Then it's very simple. You can de declare multiple variables like this. The syntax is almost same, but small change here. Suppose you want to declare more than one variable. The syntax for this is data type space variable name one comma. Again, what is that? Uh, variable name two comma dot dot dot. Means you, in this way, you can declare as many variables as possible. So that is the basic point here. I hope this is clear, right? It depends on requirement, of course. So that is simple thing about what is that? So this uh, about how to declare a single variable or multiple variables in Java. Not only in Java, this is I told you, right? You are parallel learning some three to four languages, something like C or C++, even C sharp also. Even C sharp has almost the same concepts of Java. So almost when you are really good at Java, you are almost good at some 70 to 80 percent of C sharp. That, that's what I can guarantee you this. OK, fine. Now, maybe you ask me a question again, sir. Could you give us one more small example? Why not in text comma y comma set something like this? Is it clear to all of you, right, friends? So are you following guys? So that's the point here. Now, after this, my question is. Uh, so once you know the syntax, the next thing about variables is we should understand the rules for declaring variables. What is that? Rules for declaring variables. So what are the rules we should follow to declare variables friends? Simple. First thing. A variable should start with uh, means rules for declaring means how to name variables. That is the point here. When you talk about variable variable should start with alphabet or underscore or 
dollar it has to start with the any of these th three so that is one thing a variable should start with of course let me quickly write that even alphabet r underscore r dollar that is one thing so after that if you want you can have numbers anyhow i'll ask you quick questions so that it's very easy to all of you to understand that so what is the point here it should start with alphabet r underscore r dollar and after that we can have what is that friend sir we can have numbers too because students keep asking me questions sir can i have numbers in a variable without any doubt you can have numbers but the rule is your variable must start with alphabet or underscore or dollar after that if you want you can put numbers so that is rule number one rule number two no special symbols except what is that friend sir don't use any special symbols except uh, underscore and dollar that is another important point so that is another one so no special symbols that's fine next one don't use any special symbols it leads to compilation error except these two next third one no white spaces in a variable don't put any spaces actually white spaces means we can call it as blank spaces but don't put any spaces friends even this leads to compilation errors so this is about rules for declaring variables i hope you got clarity here let me ask you quick questions sir i hope you can answer this just tell me whether these variables are valid or invalid depending upon the rules which we had discussed I, are you ready for this friends will you just uh, say yes for this friends are you with me yes sir so now let me ask you quick questions here <clears throat> the first one a b c 1 2 3 is it a valid variable or invalid variable you have a chat box please type in there friends so that uh, i get some uh, an idea about whether you are following or should i repeat that again one more time uh, is it s or no valid or invalid please type in the chat box Following the rules, you should answer this. Valid or invalid? The first one. Oh, very nice. Number two. After this, sir. One, two, three, A, B, C. Valid or invalid? yes all of you we, we will keep i'll be asking questions even you, when you keep uh, answering we get better understanding nothing more, more than that next step a b c space one two three valid or invalid next one a b c underscore one two three valid or invalid okay next one underscore just only underscore valid or invalid only underscore yes oh, even we can use only underscore it's valid so this is valid this is invalid because we, we can't start with numbers and this is invalid no spaces are allowed and this is valid underscore is allowed only underscore valid no problem and then uh, only dollar valid or invalid next one after this sir. abc dollar 123 do you think this is valid and finally the last one abc underscore 123 do you think this is valid yep so this is idea about what is that uh, all the different uh, and last question abc dot one two three this is valid no because dot is not allowed in variables 
I hope this is clear for all of you friends. Got clarity here, right? So that's all. This is a simple idea about what is that uh, variables. Let me quickly ask you quick questions uh, just to see that how far you are able to follow here. So you know what is variable here, right? So variable is uh, it's nothing but an identifier. And you know the syntax. What is the syntax? Data type space variable name followed by semicolon. This is just to declare only one variable. Suppose I want to declare multiple variables. How do I declare that? For that the syntax is data type space variable one comma variable two comma then you can de declare as you like and that is fine. Now the question is rules for declaring variables. What is that? So these are very simple to understand. It has to start with the alphabet variable or underscore or dollar. No special symbols are allowed except underscore and dollar. No white spaces. And you had answered most of the questions correct. So it's a great job. So that is about variable part friends. I hope this is clear right. So I think uh, you had some good session here. And uh, this is for today friends. Do you have any questions apart from this? So this is idea about all this. Some basics of programming. What is platform? What is platform dependent, independent, JVM, bytecode? All that Gen just basic things. What is language types actually high level machine translator types? These are just basics nothing to do that with your coding just to get some idea. So is it clear to all of you here, right? So that's any questions here. Yep, so please ask me keep a KPR. You can ask me. No, no, not actually. I mean, when you say like, uh, are you following a, 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 so I'm, uh, so far I'm good. So far I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other has any questions here? So that's, you have a, uh, clarity about all these things and we are going to continue with this friends. Sir. Uh, again, we are going to start with the keywords, constants, data types, operators. These are also very important fundamentals if you want to develop any programming. Uh, so these are the basics, not just for Java. Again, I am telling you, we are doing this from the scratch. You don't need to have any pro programming background to learn this. I hope this is clear, right? No programming background is required, but definitely we'll become the good programmers here. No doubt about that. <clears throat> That's it, my dear friends. So, clear, right? Clear to all of you. Actually, we'll be, we'll be doing a one hour, fifteen minutes, uh, or one hour, uh, ten hour, fifteen hour, sometimes twenty minutes every day. Uh, and definitely, this session goes for uh, forty to forty-five days, and you'll be uh, discussed on the very deeper things of Java also. It's not just only uh, what is that uh, understanding the concepts. Also, we do the implementation parallelly. I'll be asking you to write code and uh, you can parallelly go with the code development also. So that's how this session goes actually. So and uh, up to, up, apart from that, uh, duration is fine. You know about very well. And uh, I hope this is clear, right? You, you are following, right? And this is actually, you know, uh, mm -hmm. So what is that friends sir? Uh, you can see here uh, this is there is a message here. Uh, please you can share your contact details here and phone numbers emails uh, for further communication. Uh, otherwise you can also. Uh, what is that term? send him personal mail otherwise to Sai actually. So that's it friends. Uh, if you have any questions then I'm ready to answer your questions now. Any questions, friends? No, right? Okay. So, shall we stop here then? Uh, yeah, so far we are good with the lecture. It's really nice. 
introductory uh, and to java and uh, i have a little bit idea about java but not all. so yeah really good to have it. definitely we'll do from the very beginning nothing to worry okay oh. definitely you get very good experience also no doubt about that might be generally you know everybody in the demo session will be uh, will be telling like this yeah of course like you know in the demo section in the sense like you know we are starting with the beginning so, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm telling. But, but the point is uh, uh, you will get have a very good experience in learning java here because uh, uh, i am both into what is that development as well as training i'm not just only real time or something okay and second thing is tomorrow also we have session and we'll continue this okay tomorrow okay. same time we have the session friends uh, uh, please inform to your friends if anybody is interested because i know different many people are struggling to get proper trainer also i know very well about this yeah. so anyhow tomorrow same time we'll we'll meet here and we have the session tomorrow too and we'll continue with this and start uh, coding and you understand how this is going to shape up soon within one or two to three sessions you'll get a confidence that okay we can do everything in java okay yeah so thank you so much for the session and for attending this we'll meet tomorrow uh, if anybody has questions i can i'll answer them so shall i stop here then yeah ma okay then thank you good night to all of you and good good morning thank you, yeah. thank you very much yeah yeah, yeah. bye